hello everyone, I'm Nate and welcome to my channel. All right, today I got something a little different for you. All right, so I got a package in from Rand City Skills uh, about a week ago or so. Um, in there I have a review that I'm gonna be reviewing later on, uh, but I also got these little guys. All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, so these are Lego pieces, uh, or, or, or Lego pieces, uh, that have little LEDs in them, little battery in them, and you can attach them to any of their Lego enabled hub designs, so which is uh, most of their yo-yos out there. So I have the duck here, uh, version one, that I'm going to be using on this, but they hook right in there. Uh, they're, they're pretty solid as well. So the top, to turn it on, has a little battery in there, little LED, turns on like that, boom. All right, and you have a little flashing LED that changes colors. Uh, it goes red, green, purple, blue. I think that's all of them, yeah. All right, so really cool. And so I thought, you know what? It's been a while since I've done any light painting. All right, so if you don't know what light painting is, uh, well, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And I'm gonna give you a little tutorial and some of my results of what I, I did. Now, I am no expert light painter. I follow a couple different photographers on uh, Instagram that pretty much that's all they do uh, is light painting and they have some fantastic uh, pieces of art that are very unique um, in, in the realm of photography. But and so if you want to check that out, it's a simple Google search or something and you can see good examples of that. First off, let's talk about what light painting is. Essentially it is a long exposure. That's the key thing. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the settings I have on my camera. Uh, as well uh, and what I used. Uh, now I kind of dialed in some of those settings depending on what I shot, but the big thing I changed was the shutter speed. All right, and so you want to use a slow shutter. Uh, and so it tracks the light. Um, so it doesn't just track it in one moment. It, so if you're kind of taking this light here, all right, so if I took it like this, all right, and if I'm moving it along, it's going to track that entire line. And so you can actually draw with it and you can paint with it. Uh, that's why it's called light painting. I have a, a brush that's really cool that you, and you can use flashlights, you can do all kinds of things, you can make your own tools, but I thought, let's learn to light paint with a yo-yo, all right? So I have another one here, so I'll have one on each side, and I thought, okay, well, first thing I thought was, it'd be kind of cool to kind of showcase a few different tricks um, and see what that looks like. Maybe some classic tricks, maybe some on my own, and kind of see what the pattern looks like, so to speak. Um, it has some interesting results. Uh, then I also try to write with it. Uh, now, a key thing with writing, if you're trying to make a word, uh, is you have to write backwards. Kind of like you're writing on a mirror, you know, if you, or a window, I'm sorry, and you're, you're, you're wanting the person on the other side of the window to see it, so you have to write backwards, otherwise, the word will come out backwards. Now you could write it that way and flip it, I guess, in editing, uh, but it's more fun to learn to write backwards, right? So I, I wrote my name, you know, and I wrote yo-yo, things like that. Anyways, but you have to learn going this way over instead of left to right. So right to, le right to left and backwards. Uh, so that was fun to learn how to do that. I've not really done too much of writing. I've been mostly trying to do designs. You could also do designs. Um, so with those kind of things, I didn't have it on the string. I kind of just used the yo-yo itself in my hand, moved it around. So that's how I did that effect. I also did, tr attempted, at least, I do a flower as well. And so you can see those results. But let's talk about first what equipment you could have. Um, you don't need everything that I have here, uh, but I'm using my Sony a7 III here, so it's a, a, a more high-end, you know, kind of professional camera. Uh, as far as my lens is concerned, I'm using my widest lens that I have in my kit, so it's a 35 millimeter. Um, so if you have a wider lens, even better. All right, you want to try to capture as much as you can. Um, and uh, what I did is I actually went inside. And so I went into my office, and it was dark outside anyways. I turned off all the lights. That's a key thing too. As far as your environment, you wanna make sure that there's really no light. So if you're outside and there's a lot of light pollution, try to get away from that. So if you can go outdoors, you know, like if you're in the country, that's great. I'm not in the country. And so I really couldn't shield myself from a lot of light pollution. So I had a more controlled environment in a room. Plus it's nice and warm in the house compared to out here. So that's what I did uh, and it worked out just fine. Uh, as far as my other settings are concerned, and I'll show you the back of my camera so you can see where I started with, uh, I went ahead and started with a 30 uh, second shutter speed. That gives me 30 seconds, so once I hit the shutter, 
uh, it's gonna give 30 seconds and then you'll hear the shutter close. Uh, and it's capturing all that light within that 30 seconds. Uh, now that was a little bit too long for some shots. I didn't need that much. Uh, and so I went down to 20 or maybe 15 or whatever. So I didn't have to kind of sit there like an idiot. Yeah, uh, because the other thing too, I, instead of turning it off, I, which I could have done, right? I could have just twisted it off. I actually just covered it up. So when I didn't want any of the light in there, I just covered it as much as I could. And that, that resulted pretty well. Uh, or you could also take yourself out of the frame. So once you cover that, take yourself out of the frame and it, you're not gonna see yourself at all, which is kind of really cool. It's like you vanished. Uh, so anyway, so that's, that's the basic settings. I also, as far as my aperture, um, I went ahead and I think it was at like, I started with like a seven, 7.1. Um, you, you want it pretty large uh, so that you're capturing as much as you want, nice and crystal clear. Um, you're capturing everything in the frame. Um, yeah, you don't want to go down like 1.8. That's what this lens goes down to, this 35. I wouldn't want to go down that far. So you could go up a little higher, whatever, but you know, 5.6, 7.1, even higher. I think I even went to 10 on some of the shots. Uh, that's perfectly acceptable as well. Uh, and then as far as my, um, my ISO, I went ahead and just did, I think I did 50 for some of them because my camera goes down that far. 100 is fine too. I wanted it nice and clear uh, without any noise at all. So those were my basic, basic settings. But the key thing, of course, is your shutter speed. So if you don't have a camera like this where you can shoot manual, um, uh, you can use your phone. Um, so there's a bunch of really great apps if you I have an iPhone So if you're searching the Apple store, I'm sure for any other phone Android Whatever if you're searching those stores you can find a slow shutter camera that you can download and most likely for free And so you can adjust those settings there as well. Um, so but again that that base level At least 15 that gives you 15 seconds to do whatever you're trying to do. Okay um, and so that's the basics. You can also set it in bulb mode, which if you have a trigger, um, so that's ideal actually, if you have a, um, a shutter trigger or some kind of button or what have you, a shutter button uh, that's external. Now I use my phone because I have an app on there that connects to my camera. So I could use that as my shutter. So I didn't have to be at the camera. And the last thing of course you need is um, whether you're using a phone or you're using a camera that you can shoot in all manual modes is a tripod. That is a must. All right, you need to have it still because any movement with the camera itself will give tons of blur, especially at like, you know, a shutter speed of 15 seconds or 30 seconds or what have you. So it needs to be completely still. All right, so that's, let's run through that again. For his equipment, you need a camera or a phone with a, with a shutter speed or a, a low shutter, um, you know, sort of app, okay? Um, you need a tripod, you need an environment that is free from uh, any kind of light pollution. So you can either create that inside or outdoors. And then you saw my settings as well. So there you go. All right, let's go ahead and see some results. All right, and then we'll end it with that and uh, enjoy, experiment. You know, if you uh, pick up one of these, um, I'll have a link in the description where to buy uh, these from Rain City. Uh, so if you pick up one of these and you do some experimentation uh, and you post it on Instagram, tag me. I would love to see your, uh, what your creations are. That's kind of the fun thing about light painting. It is just experimentation and it's just a lot of fun. All right, playing with something new and you get to play with a yo-yo at the same time. All right, let's see the results and then we'll get back at you after that.
I hope you enjoyed that. Again, this was using uh, these little light up Legos from Rain City. You can attach to any of their uh, Lego enabled yo-yos. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'll have a link in the description where you can buy those. And until the next one, later.